Happy New Year from sunny Southern California. And you know what that means? A whole bunch of brand new gun laws for 2023 for you to be aware of. Because the only thing cooler than shooting is staying out of jail. Stick around. Thanks for joining us on Shoot of the Series. By now you know that I'm Ed, and what we'd like you to do is hit the like, the share, as well as the subscribe button so you don't miss a single episode of what's going on here at Shoot of the Series. Today we're going to be spending some time, a lot of time, on California's new gun laws for 2023. And there's a bunch of them. So we want to spend some time with it because a lot of these may not be published, you may not get a good notification, but you're still responsible for knowing them. And in California, it's pretty much a full-time job keeping up with gun laws. Now, keep in mind that I am not a lawyer. I do not give legal advice. What we're going to do is give you the links from the California DOJ where you can actually look at these laws um, from an official source so that you can get you know the exact wordage for it. I'll probably do some paraphrasing just because I don't want to read the whole laws because I know you don't want to hear me read the whole laws. So without any further ado, we want to talk about AB 1621. And if we talk about AB 1621, AB starts for assembly bill, where the bill originates. You'll also hear some references to SB, which might mean Senate bill from where it originates. And unless I tell you different, all of these are going to be um, starting on January 1. So the first one, AB 1621, has to do with what they call unserialized firearms. And in common parlance, we like to refer to that as a ghost gun, something that might be a home built that doesn't have something you would buy from a retail store that already has a serialized frame, and uh, the state of California is cracking down on those. So it redefines what a firearm precursor part is, and a precursor part would be something necessary to mount the rest of the firearm to, to make it a workable firearm. And what it does is it requires any person in possession of an unserialized firearm to apply to the DOJ for a unique mark or identification before January 1 of 2024. The possession or transfer of a firearm without a serial number or mark of identification will be prohibited. It authorizes a new resident to the state within 60 days of arrival to request a mark or a serial number for any weapon otherwise valid to possess in the state. What it does, the nuts and bolts, the meat and potatoes of this, is it prohibits the possession, sale, transfer, or use of specified firearms, manufacturing equipment, with the exception of specified entities. I don't know what specified entities mean, but it probably means the government follows a different set of rules than we do. Big surprise, huh? Okay, moving on to AB 1594. In this regard, civil suits. This will take effect on July 1 of 2023. And what it does is it establishes a firearm industry standard, whatever that means. And it is going to hold uh, manufacturers responsible to a point where it, quote, authorizes a person who has suffered harm in California, comma, the attorney general, or city or county attorneys to bring civil action against a firearm industry member for an act or a mission in violation of the firearm industry standard of conduct. So basically what it does is it opens up manufacturers to civil suits for a standard that has not been developed yet. Um, it's pretty arbitrary, but like I said, welcome to California. We also have AB 228, and this deals with firearm dealer inspections, and this sets down in law that firearm dealers will be inspected at least once in every three-year period, in which they will be audited, 
They'll take samples of their forms and they'll go through and make sure that firearm dealers are doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing um, in the performance of their jobs. Now, AB 311 sets up prohibited places uh, for firearm sales. And in this case, it's the Del Mar Fairgrounds in San Diego County. And it prohibits the sale of firearm precursor parts or ghost gun parts at the property known as the Del Mar Fairgrounds. It's very similar to what we have for AB 1769, which sets up the Ventura County Fair is also as a prohibited place. But it prohibits the sale of any firearm, firearm precursor part, meaning a ghost gun part, or ammunition on the property known as the Ventura County Fair and Event Center in Ventura County. These are generally both places that you would refer to as gun shows. So they're cracking down on what can be done at gun shows and what can't. Moving on, we have AB 1842, which has to do with restocking fees. And what this codifies is that um, sellers of handguns cannot charge more than 5% for a restocking fee if somebody purchases a gun and cancels the sale within the 10-day waiting period prescribed by the state of California. Um, I've never known anybody who's canceled a sale, but now they've got a law for it. AB 2156 covers manufacturers, and it expands the prohibitions on the manufacture of firearms without a state license. Now, the meat and potatoes of that is that it prohibits the use of three-dimensional printers to manufacture any firearms without a license. So because of that, if you want to make guns, finish guns, manufacture guns, you're going to have to get a state license and jump through California's hoops in order to get that. And what this does is they don't want people making guns in their garages anymore. Now, AB 2239 um, regards prohibited persons who cannot own a firearm, and it creates a 10-year firearm ownership prohibition for any individuals after January 23 who have been convicted of child abuse or elder and dependent adult abuse involving violence. So if you're involved in abusing a senior or you get convicted of abusing a child with the use of violence, that's 10 years that you cannot own a firearm. Seems pretty straightforward. I don't have a huge problem with that. Now, AB 2571 relates to firearms advertising for minors, and it prohibits the firearm industry from marketing or advertising firearm-related products to minors and authorizes public attorneys and injured plaintiffs to bring a civil action to enforce the prohibition, obtain objunctive relief, and seek civil penalties, or in some cases, damages for harm caused by the violation. So basically, the marketing and the advertisement to children has been outlawed. And um, that makes me scratch my head a little bit because it sounds to me like a First Amendment violation. And it makes me wonder if there are other products that are marketed to children that should also be outlawed. The one that comes most quickly to mind would be things like, say, video games or uh, equipment for vaping. You know, both of those are marketed to children. They cause harm, but you don't see the same thing happening in those areas. Just my opinion. I'm not a legal scholar but I'm looking for a certain amount of, you know, equity within the law and how it's enforced. Now, moving on uh, is AB 452, and this is public safety, parental notification of firearm safety laws, and it requires local education agencies to provide notification to parents of each student about California child access prevention laws and laws relating to safe storage of firearms. What that basically means is they are going to be an out, doing an outreach program within the schools so that kids are educated about the safe storage of firearms that they're not supposed to have access to. So it's one more way of getting the message back to the parents that all guns need to be safely stored. 
Now, the next one is AB2551, and this is firearms related, and it requires the Department of Justice upon notification that a specified prohibited person attempting to purchase a firearm will notify local authorities in the jurisdiction where the prohibited person is making the attempt to buy a firearm. So, now there's going to be a reporting mechanism for people that are not allowed to buy firearms, who when they attempt to buy a firearms, law enforcement will be notified. And I can't necessarily see a downside with that either, but once again, I'm not a legal scholar. Moving on, the next is AB 1929, and this has to do with Medi-Cal benefits, and it adds violence prevention services as covered benefits under Medi-Cal subject to medical necessity and utilization controls. Um, that's a head scratcher for me, but um, we'll have to see how violence prevention is part of medical care. That's a little bit beyond my understanding, but I still wanted to make you aware of it. Now, this one does make sense to me. And this is SB 906 for school safety covering homicide threats. And this will be effective July 1 of 2023. It requires local educational agencies to provide information to parents about California child access prevention laws and laws related to the safe storage of firearms. Kind of buttressing what we just talked about with uh, AB 452. But this one goes even further because what this does is it requires school officials to report to law enforcement any threat or perceived threat of a homicidal act. And it requires law enforcement or the school police to conduct an investigation, a threat assessment, and that includes a review of the DOJ's firearm registry, but more importantly, a search of the school and or the student's property by law enforcement or school police if certain conditions are met. What this does is it allows for the school, school police, or local law enforcement to search the school or search through the belonging of a student's possessions for any type of weapon or perceived weapon that could be used in a crime. Not being a lawyer, uh, you know, you've, you've got some Fourth Amendment search and seizure issues that, that it brings up. Um, I don't know how this is going to all shake out. SB 915 covers firearms and sales on state property, and it prohibits, except as exempted, the sale of any firearm, firearm precursor part, or a ghost gun part, or ammunition being sold on state property. Um, I could see where if you had a fairground that wasn't owned by a city or a county, um, this is going to, you know, maybe shut down, you know, gun sales at, um, you know, a fairground that is owned by the state of California or in any state buildings. Now, the last one we're going to get into is SB 1327, uh, Firearms uh, Private Rights of Action. And, and this one has three different elements. And, and without going through the entire law, it basically allows the, uh, uh, the victim or various you know, enforcement agencies like the DOJ or local city or county attorneys to go through and start civil actions for the purchase of illegal firearms or lending illegal firearms to persons under 21 or other prohibited persons. So this is just one more way of tightening up the law. Now, the one thing I want to say about all of these is these were all signed by the current governor, Gavin Newsom, within a couple days of New York, New York's law being stricken down by the Supreme Court. And that, that case decision is basically going to overshadow many of these new laws that were just signed in a flurry of activity, and many of these laws are going to be subject to judicial review and could possibly get thrown out because of the overreaching laws in the New York case. 
So we're going to have to spend some time, see how these all work through the courts, and see which are thrown out and see which stick. We're going to be putting in um, all the links to all the official sites so that you can read all of these for yourself so that you can all get a better understanding outside of my interpretations here on Shooter the Series. We'd like to thank you all for joining us and hope you tune in again. On behalf of the cast and crew, y'all take care.